I'm tired of explaining this now. I'm tired. I've explained it last night. I was in uh, Tuesday Live. I explained it before then. Maybe I've seen the next, after now, if anybody has a quiz again, I will not be happy. I've said to you that we need to run the rails. You need money to run the rails. There is no budget provision for running costs. Because our plan is that you will run from the returns you get from the rails. Okay. Now, if you are going to reduce, a part, like today, they say they carry 50 passengers in a coach of 56. It means that you are losing money of, from 25, about 25 passengers. Right? So, if we are making 120 million naira before, and now we are making less than 60, running cost is between 90 and 100 million. There are two things to do. Either we increase the cost, the fare, the transport fare, or we ask the government to subsidize. And we give government that opportunity. There's just no money with the government to go ahead and subsidize that. Because we told government, at the beginning we subsidized. It was, we were running at 56 million naira in a month. And we're getting only 16 million. So we are subsidizing at 40 million. Now, if we want to go to that regime, the implication is that government does be prepared to release that money on a monthly basis to run. Government doesn't have the money. Who will bear the cost? Not Nigerian Railway Corporation, because they too don't have the money. They're part of the government. So the passengers will have to bear the cost. Okay, so far, on what the assessments, are people really complying? And what do you think needs to be improved on? Well, you can't say for today. You have to wait for tomorrow. There'll be pressure tomorrow for those who want to go to Cardinal for Salah and those who are returning from Cardinal. There'll certainly be that pressure. Let's see what the pressure looks like. So far, people are complying with the face mask. I hear they're also complying with the sanitizer. Like I said, government will provide sanitizer, government will provide face mask. We don't have the money to provide those things. Nobody will be irresponsible. That's one thing we must do. The police must be told that anybody whose face mask comes down, there's this new style. That's what I tell people, I say, this is called a face mask. It's not called a mouth mask. You see some Nigerians, they do this. The disease can go in from here or come out from here. So you must cover everywhere. Right? People who, like what you did, this is not face mask. This is face shield. Mm -hmm. You're, as you take in air, this disease is airborne. They say it's airborne. It's not only droplets. Okay, so you are going to breathe in the air. As you breathe in the air and breathe out, you're either infecting yourself or infecting others. And we don't want that to happen on the, on the, on the train. Thank so, Lastly, is it possible that if everything is turned to normal and the country is free of the pandemic, the price will reduce down? I'm not a prophet. <laughs> but nobody even knows when it will. I'm not, I don't know, I, I won't be able to answer that question. We try to answer it amongst ourselves, to respond to that question amongst ourselves. We, is this sustainable? And when the, when the pandemic is over, can we come back to the price that we're collecting? First, don't forget, don't forget, that even before the pandemic, we were under pressure from people in Kaduna, that's why I'm surprised, asking us to, to, Raise the cost of this. I'll show you. I, I won't tell you who sent the text, but I'll show you a text from a prominent Nigerian who then asked me, who then asked me to, let me see if I can get it. Listen, I will show you what he said when I said we're increasing the price. Is they, they felt that we can't be running at a loss. Listen, so please, people from Abuja, Kaduna, Kano, Jigawa and Kasina, we really appreciate if you can get the railway working again. Then uh, I said we have increased the price. He said, sir, it's nothing compared to what the risk we face. You get the point? So we just provide the services for everybody, not because we want to make profit. At this stage, we're not making profit. At this stage, just to maintain the running costs. Thank you. Sorry, sir, I came in do you, do you, do you, do you, are you a Christian? <laughs> yes, I There's the proverb of uh, the, is it the maidens or the yes, virgins? The virgins. You are the type who they won't let in because. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, my question is just a little bit away from what you've spoken. Uh, recently we heard that some uh, um, train stations in the country were named after some deserving Nigerians. Uh, uh, some uh, commentators have looked at the names and said these particular names have been, have been used to name some other national infrastructure. Like which one? Uh, so like which one? 
Like who now? Which, which road is that? Name the place now. Don't, name the infrastructure. You know, that's what they call. That's what they call. No, no, no. I won't answer you because that's what they call investigative journalism. If you don't provide me with the facts, I won't be able to respond. I won't answer you until you. I won't answer you. On, I won't respond until you give me the people whose names have been on other things. Because we are careful in selecting those names. The question to ask you is: I know. Let me help you. You will say the one. You say the one must have. He has a name. He has a street in in, in Lagos. Have you, looked, have, you, have you looked at that achievement? I'm not, the question is, what are the criteria that were used to decide? I, I asked the question, have you looked at that achievement? Why, no, why you mean? No, 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 I also have a right to ask you a question. No, I won't answer you now. I have a right not to answer you. I have a right not to answer you. No, but you have the right to answer me since it is a valid question. Okay, I don't want to answer. Is that not part of journalism? No comments. No, no comments. As the Minister of Transportation, one of my responsibilities is to name is to name uh, is to name uh, stations. Okay, so I choose to name one: Judith Amechi, Chikamba Amechi, Obin Amechi. What's wrong with that? It's wrong if you use uh, if you name them. What criteria? What criteria? Is my name there? Is my name there? I said Chibike. I said I said Judith Amechi. No, I said Judith Amechi, my wife. Okay. I said Chikamba Amechi, my son. Okay. Obin Amechi, my son. Lemchi Amechi, my son. They didn't tell me these are the following criteria by which you name streets. And so you don't have a right to ask me that question. Okay, so we just want to... But is there anybody there that's undeserving? No, that's not the question. The question is uh, what criteria was used. Next question. Yes, Honourable Ministers, uh, yesterday you were at the House of Rep and they raised issues around China loans, particularly around issues of clauses that suggested that we are saving some sovereign rights to China based on some of those contracts. Now, what, would you, what are your thoughts on all this? I'm appearing before the National House of Reps again on the 17th. I've told the House of Reps, I told them two things. First, is a, I just got to know that it's a clause in the agreement. It's simple. China will give you, like, the loan between, the loan for, to construct the rail from Ibadan to Kano is $5.3 billion. The reason why you're ceding your, you're ceding your sovereignty, not that you're ceding your sovereignty, you can't take away the sovereignty of Nigeria. The implication is that if at the end of the day you don't pay us back our money, whatever we need to take from you, we will take without you telling me about sovereignty. But most of the most times what the Chinese do is that they go after the same asset that they have constructed to be able to recover their money. So what's wrong with that? You're asking for $5.3 billion. That's how many trillions? Nearly 8 trillion naira. And they say, just with that sovereignty, don't tell me if I want to get back this asset. You say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a government in Nigeria, you can't t take it. So how do I recover my money? Now, for me, the National Assembly, in their wisdom, don't forget they are, they are wise men going by the Constitution. In their wisdom, if they think that is wrong, then they should tell us how to get the money to be able to build this infrastructure. But if this infrastructure had been built before we came, we we're not mad men, we won't build them again, we'll go to something else. If you ask me what infrastructure you want to build, schools. Because I want to have an educated class. But unfortunately, you can't also do that without growing the economy. And one of the infrastructure that grew and, and propelled an economy in the country is transportation. That's one. Two, I have told the National, the National Assembly, nothing wrong with investigation. It's part of their responsibilities. It's an oversight function. But for now, you jeopardize the ability of government to raise money if you continue to ask those questions that we think that will make China say, what's going on here? That's the point I'm making. So, you will lose the loan you're asking for Potakot to Meduguri. So, Potakot to Meduguri is Potakot to Aba, Umahe, uh, Enugu, uh, Makodi, Lafia, Jos, Bauchi, Gumbi, um, Damaturo, then Meduguri. You will lose the money you're asking for Ibadan to Kano, which is Ibadan, the Loren, Mina, uh, leave Kaduna, Abuja, that's been done. So you can't. Right? Now you, you don't know what, how the Russians will react because the Russians are negotiating with Russians on the loan from Lagos to Calabar. So you lose the money for Lagos, all that area of Ore to Benin, Benin to, including Akure, Benin to Asaba, Asaba to Anisha, then Benin to Wari, 
passing through all those really Sapele and other to you know, Inegua, to Port Harcourt, back to Aba, and then to, to Uyo and to Calabar. So are they saying that we should lose these loans? Because you're asking for, uh, is it right to, to seed sovereignty? It is not seeding sovereignty in the technical sense of it. It is seeding sovereignty, giving them the power to recover their assets if they need to recover it to be able to recover their money. So I don't see what's wrong with that. Okay, so I'd like to ask, what's the map out plan for the dealings of this loan? I hope you're seeing me well. <laughs> I'm not the Minister for Finance. <laughs> it's been opened. Yesterday, the Minister for Finance sent me the account details for NRS to pay in. Because if we're making... 120 million naira in a month, and we're running for 90 or 100 million. Let's be paying, matter how small, 20 million, 30 million, like that, into the account. By the time you know it, you raise $1 million. <laughs> you send back to finance to go and pay as our contribution. The idea is open an escrow account where once we move the running cost, the rest is uh, the profit, which can be used to settle the debt. Thank you, Thank you. Sorry, just a last question. Uh, which uh, medium do you represent? <laughs> Right, um, the owner, by the right way, is my friend. For the airport uh, aviation industry, hmm. uh, one key issue they have is uh, the elite not uh, you know, adhering hmm. to the protocols. Hmm. Uh, what are you putting into place to ensure that uh, this does not reoccur in this sector? One of the lessons my parents taught me, not just my father, is never insult yourself. And I'll give you how, how that is true. As a speaker, I met a very prominent Nigerian running against traffic. Very prominent Nigerian, he, quite close to the former governor of Rivers State, Dr. Peter Dili. And I stopped him. Oh, I'm coming from Dr. Peter Dili. I said, don't give a damn. Literally insulted him and sent him to the police station. You see, as important as he was, if he obeyed the law, would I do that? Okay. A similar thing happened on the day that the daughter, daughter was wedding. I was chairman of the wedding organizing committee. A very prominent Nigerian came to the wedding. I went to sit where the National Assembly members were supposed to sit. The seats were labeled. So you, I went to him and said, morning, sir. You are not sitting in the proper place, sir. Can I take you to the proper seat for you? He said, no, I'm Dr. Dili's friend. I'm here to see him. I said, fine. You can go to his house and see him. But if you're coming for the wedding, you must sit according to the prepared listings. He refused. I got the police to take him out of that seat. The same way we would do here. If you're an important person, please behave like an important person. If you behave like a madman, you see many, so many madmen here. Because the, re the reason for this is that everybody wants to be alive. We won't let you kill the next person because you're an important man. You get the point? <laughs>